Good morning. My name is Dave Mann, pastor for Missions and Internationals. It's my pleasure to share the Word of God with you this morning. But I must admit, Psalm 35 is not a happy portion of the Word of God. It's kind of rough. And, but as you know, we're going through the Psalms this summer, and we're also identifying secular songs that kind of get at the same emotion that the Psalms share. So today we're looking at Eye of the Tiger. Roll it. know that song, you know the singer, the composer, the author is ready for a fight. He's angry, he's mad, similar to what we have in Psalm 35. There's some anger there, even, you might even call it rage, if you read the full psalm. What do you do when you have feelings of anger? What do you do with that? The rage, the frustration, and deep, deep predicament that you think you're in, and you're a victim of injustice. It's just not right. What do you do with those emotions? Well, you and King David, and a few other authors in the Psalms, have something in common. There's a category for these Psalms that are angry. They're called the imprecatory psalms. Yeah, a new vocabulary word today. Imprecatory. To imprecate means to call down curses on someone. Imprecatory psalms, I gotta turn this thing on. Imprecatory psalms are those that call for prayers of deliverance and prayers of judgment on the bad guy on the people that are opposed to you. Now, sometimes, well, let's just say it. Sometimes we are victims of injustice and we have these moments of anger and frustration and rage because of sexual abuse, blatant racial discrimination, murder of a family member, betrayal of a marriage vow, brokenness, hurt, isolation, abandonment, things, emotions, and experiences you never dreamed of having in your life. Well, these imprecatory psalms express that kind of anger. The problem is that these psalms are problematic. Bible commentators and experts sometimes don't know what to do with them. And we, ordinary Christians, don't know what to do with them either. Well, the imprecatory psalms call for that kind of payback for injustice that we have received. But they're a problem. Well, Jesus, in the New Testament, says that we are never to pay back evil for evil. Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. The Apostle Paul writes similar things. Now, the problem with the imprecatory psalm is not just Psalm 35. There's a whole class, there's a whole category of psalms called imprecatory psalms. And they're not just a few of them. Here you got it, whoops, back up. Psalm 5, 6, 11, 12, 35, 37, 40, 52, 54, 56, 57, 58, 59, there's a whole string of them there, 69, 79, 83, 94, 137, and 143. That's not a small number of psalms that are angry at what's happened. What do you do with those kind of psalms? Some of you I know are in Bible reading programs that get you to read every part, every chapter of the Bible in the course of a year. 
So when you get to Psalm 35 and others like it, what do you do? How, who let these psalms into the Bible, really? Do they belong there? Well, quite frankly, some of us ignore them. That you get to that page on your schedule of Bible reading and you scan the psalm and move on to something more to your liking. Some of us uh, read the psalms like this, this kind of a psalm, and we are more overt and upfront about it, and some people actually excise them. They cut them out. They, they actually say and believe and teach they don't belong. In fact, the New Testament has said that these don't count anymore because the Old Testament's mean and nasty and cruel, and the New Testament is calm and nice and pleasant. Really? There's no forgiveness and compassion in the Old Testament? The New Testament, there's no talk of judgment? Well, you look more closely and you see that the Apostle Paul actually quotes from the imprecatory psalms, as does the Apostle Peter. And yes, even Jesus quotes from the imprecatory psalms. So if you're going to throw out the imprecatory psalms in their original, you got to throw out Peter and Paul and Jesus as well. Well, what do we do with difficult words that are in the Bible? Rather than excising them, rather than ignoring them, let's look for a more helpful theological framework, theological approach. Got three quick points we're going to make. Even the imprecatory psalms are part of God's inspired word. You look at 2 Peter 3, 16, it says all scripture is inspired by God. Not just the parts that we like, not just the parts that already affirm what we believe today. All scripture is inspired by God. 2 Peter 1 says that holy men of God, when they were writing the scriptures, were carried along by the Holy Spirit and wrote what he wanted to be written. Another point in theology is that we need to admit that judgment is part of God's plan. Judgment of God's enemies is real. And that's not something that God dismissed when we moved into the New Testament. There's judgment mentioned in the New Testament as well. We are not called to judge, but God has that right and that privilege because he is holy. A third theological point that has to do with the imprecatory psalms is that there is no place for personal vengeance in the Christian life. Oh, we pray, we can pray, and we do pray, if we follow the scriptures, that God would frustrate the purposes of the enemy. In fact, Jesus taught us to pray that way. Um, Jesus taught us to pray for warfare, for anger, for Yes. In fact, every Sunday we pray it. We're going to pray it again later today. We pray for thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thy kingdom, how many kings in a kingdom? One. We're praying that all the other would-be kings, including ourselves, be frustrated and that we bend the knee and confess the name of the one king. 
and that his will, not the many, many different wills of the world, his will be done. This is spiritual warfare that we're praying for. We have emotions and we have anger against injustice. God also does not like injustice. We're asking God to make his righteousness and his judgment prevail. And that we let our own agenda go. But we do pray energetically for his will to be done. So there you have some, some three theological points that we need to keep in mind as we read the difficult psalms of the imprecatory psalms. We want to say that yeah, this is part of God's inspired word. I can't dismiss it. I can't ignore it. The judgment is real. God's judgment, not mine. And there's no place for my own personal my own personal vengeance to be done. Well, let's look also at a helpful emotional approach as we deal with our emotions that might be mirrored in the Psalms. First of all, we need to acknowledge that deep hurt is real. Hey, this is not pretend. We're not painting a fairy Pollyanna story here. This is real, real life has real hurt, and sometimes we are on the receiving end of deep hurt. What do you do with those emotions? We express them to God. We go before the Lord and we express our hurt, our anger, our frustration, our confusion, and maybe even our rage. We confess it to God, not to social media. And these are psalms you often see in these imprecatory psalms, a verse or two of surrender. You express your anger to God. This is wrong. This is unjust. God, how could you let this happen? Oh, okay, God. You have your plan. I release my anger. You have the right to judge. I do not. You are the Lord. You are the king. It's yours. Well, we want to repay others But both in the Old and the New Testament, we are called not to repay, but we allow God to be the owner of vengeance. Well, David, King David, was overwhelmed. He felt overwhelmed by his enemies. But many times you read these imprecatory psalms, and it does not seem to be a military campaign. These are sometimes personal friends of King David. And that's when the hurt gets even deeper for us, right? If it's, if it's a known enemy that's trying to do you wrong, okay, you kind of expect that. But family friends, friends, neighbors, co-workers, business colleagues, why, oh my gosh, then it hurts even more. Psalm 35 is not a logical reasoning about hurt. It's a wrestling. It's wrestling with pain and anger and frustration. And it's done in the presence of God himself. I'm going to read verses of Psalm 35 because sometimes when when you are the victim of injustice, you don't have words to say. You don't have words to pray. You'd like, we like our prayers to be eloquent. We like our prayers to be refined and well-crafted and pretty. When you're a victim of injustice, you don't have those kinds of words. And so what do you do? I I suggest you pick one of these psalms, where it's Psalm 35 or 
one of the 15 other ones that just got listed on the board. You can Google imprecatory psalms if you can spell it. Yeah, it corrects your spelling, doesn't it? It's pretty clear. You get close to the right spelling, you can find what are the imprecatory psalms. Let those psalms be your words. And maybe you'll be inspired to add your own paraphrase that makes it fit a little more neatly to your situation. In the remaining minutes that we have, I'd like to read some of the verses of Psalm 35 and do just that. Fight. Contend for me, O Lord, with those who contend with me. Fight against those who fight against me. Take hold of shield and buckler and rise up for my help. God, they're ganging up on me again. They're, they're doing it to me again. I'm losing. God, how can that? God, I need reinforcements. Come by your power. Send your people. Help me, God. Let them be put to shame and dishonor who seek after my life. Go get them, Lord. Let them be turned back and disappointed who devise evil against me. Let them be like chaff before the wind. You know, chaff is that outer light part of the kernel of wheat. When it's separated from the kernel, the wind just blows it away. God, that's what I want. These, these enemies of mine, they think they're the heavyweights. God, make them lightweights and just blow them out of my life. Let their way be dark and slippery with the angel of the Lord pursuing them. Let destruction come upon them when he does not know it and let the net that he hid ensnare him. God, he put up traps for me. Make him fall into his own trap. Then my soul will rejoice in the Lord, exalting in his salvation. Oh, God, rejoice. I can't imagine rejoicing now, Lord. God, I know your promises are true, at least in my head I do, but it's so hard. Lord, I need your Holy Spirit to convince me that your promises are true, not just in general, but specifically for me. I need that, God. Rescue me, Lord. Malicious witnesses rise up. They ask me of things that I do not know. God, God, they're lying about me. In fact, they lie so well. It sounds like the truth, and people believe them. And I tell the truth, and no one believes me. They believe in the bad guys. They repay me evil for good. My soul is bereft. But I, when they were sick, I wore sackcloth. I afflicted myself with fasting. God, I do them good, and they do me evil. That's not fair, God. But at my stumbling, they rejoiced, and they gathered. They gathered together against me, wretches whom I do not know. They tore at me without ceasing, like profane mockers at a feast. They're having a gossip feast, God. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words weren't. God, you know that's not true. Those words hurt. Words hurt, and they bite. They, God, they're chewing me up and spitting me out. Vindicate me. Vindicate me, Lord. Make me known publicly that I am in the right. Clear me of accusations. Prove me right according to your righteousness. Let them not say in their hearts, aha, aha, our heart's desire. Let them be put to shame. Let them be clothed with shame and dishonor, those who magnify themselves against me. God, they want to be big. They want to stand up and be huge and strong and mighty. But God, I, I admit, I want to be magnified too. But really, only you are the one to be magnified. 
Great is the Lord who delights in the welfare of his servant. Oh, Lord, I, I remember now Psalm, uh, not Psalm, Philippians 2. Therefore, you gave him a name that is above every name. Now, that's big. That's magnified. The name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those in heaven and earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. God, that's, that's magnified. I, I want to see that, Lord, in you. I want to see that you are the one who is big and magnified, and rightly so. God, I surrender this to you, that your name be great, your name be magnified, and you make me your vindicated servant. Lord, in a world that is full of pain and frustration, I recognize that you and you alone are the just judge. Your wrath is zeal against all ungodliness, and you are going to deal with every sin, both theirs and mine. And so I relinquish into your hands all vengeance. Turn the hearts of the wicked into hearts of confession and repentance, and if that is not possible, let the ways of evil be thwarted and come to nothing, whether in this phase of history or on that final day when every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And all God's people said, Amen. Please stand.